Um, this is joint work with the really great collaborators who you see on, um, on the slide. So SINSGD, Compressed Optimization for Non-Complex Problems. Uh, okay. So SINSGD is an algorithm which just takes the sign of the stochastic gradient, just sets the gradient components to plus or minus one. Um, it's compressed, which can reduce the communication time and distributed learning. And we study non-convex problems uh, because they're the realistic ones for deep learning. Okay, so here's the structure. First of all, I'm gonna tell you why you should care about this algorithm. And the claim is that everybody here should care about this algorithm for one reason or another. Um, we'll give some theoretical results and um, the, the results will be interesting in a particular regime. And uh, interestingly, this regime, um, as we're gonna empirically characterize neural networks, I claim is rather, really relevant for deep learning. So the algorithm should be good for deep neural networks. Uh, and then finally, we'll like, show you that the algorithm does actually like, work on ImageNet, and you can train an ImageNet model using this algorithm. Um, so why I care about the algorithm? The first reason is uh, gradient compression. So, as mentioned in the last talk, the, uh, one common way to uh, train neural networks today is to distribute learning over GPUs, split the data across the GPUs, um, evaluate gradients on each GPU with respect to the data on that GPU, and then send the gradients up to the parameter server. Uh, then add them up on the parameter server and send them back down. You can see there's a lot of communication going on. Every step of the algorithm, communication of gradients happens. So if we can compress the gradients, we can speed this up. And if you increase the number of GPUs, you can see that communication might become more and more important. And it would be great if we could compress the gradients. So how do we distribute SGD? Commonly, um, you just send the gradients up, you add them up, and send the result back down to the GPUs. Um, what if we want to use a sign-based optimizer? Uh, send up the signs, um, that, that's intuitive. Uh, how should we aggregate them? If we just add up the signs, we lose some compression properties because a sum of signs is no longer a sign. Um, so that could be annoying. So for that reason, we propose majority vote. Um, so send back down the sign of the sum of the signs. Uh, in essence, each GPU votes on the sign of the gradient and the majority, uh, sorry, the parameter server counts the votes and sends back the majority decision. All communication is one bit. Um, and as we're gonna see, majority vote actually has really nice theoretical properties. Um, so to reiterate, the compression saving of this algorithm is 32 times, 32 times less communication per iteration than full precision SGD. Um, so I claim that everybody should care about this algorithm. Uh, and here's another reason why you should care about it. Uh, the algorithm, in a sense, is very similar to Adam. So sign SGD, here's the update. Take the sign of the gradient. Um, rewrite this as the gradient divided by its magnitude. Um, that's the same thing. Now look at Adam. Adam starts life exactly the same way, gradient divided by magnitude, until you add um, this, per, you, you add sort of a perturbation to this algorithm now. Add a series, which is just an exponentially decaying um, sum of recent gradients. Um, and you can see that um, adding an exponentially decaying perturbation probably doesn't change the um, behavior of the algorithm very much. In particular, if you want to understand Adam, the place to start is by understanding sine SGD. Uh, and if you like momentum, we have another algorithm which we call Signum, which takes the sign of the momentum. That's the one we're actually going to benchmark in the experiments. Um, it retains the compression property. So why should you care about Adam? Uh, if you look at this chart, this is one reason you should care about Adam. This is the number of Google Scholar citations of these algorithms. So Adam, in the four years of its existence, has been cited almost, almost twice as uh, the, the Robbins and Monroe paper, which has been around for 50 years. So it's an incredibly important optimizer in the community. Uh, it's very different to SGD. It's sort of less, less well understood, yet it works pretty well. Um, and like clearly 11,000 people have cited using it, so we should, if we want to understand neural networks, we should understand why this algorithm is, works so well. Okay. Um, so the, to, to reiterate, the motivation for this work is sign descent is uh, been around for a while, has uh, weak theoretical foundations, but incredibly popular. Gradient compression, also 
um, it's not clear why it works so well. The, the sort of um, results people get are that you can compress the gradients a lot and not really lose anything in terms of convergence rate in practice. Um, our work, using the sign, which is what we propose, differs to existing compression algorithms because we say you don't need to care about correcting the bias. Uh, a lot of, um, or I think all of the current um, proposed gradient compression algorithms take pains to correct the bias in the gradient estimate. We say don't worry about that, just use the sign. Um, okay, so we try and unify these and propose sign-based gradient compression. Because uh, this is the non-convex um, session, we should first build a theory. So we're going to try and build a theory of sign-based optimization. So um, the first thing, I'm going to propose some considerations which we should make. What should we worry about? We should worry that sign-based, sign SGD, sign-based optimization might not converge. That's the first thing we should worry about. Even if it does converge, we should worry about its dimension dependence. If it messes up every single component of the gradient for high dimensional problems, that could be really bad. Um, something else we should worry about. We've proposed to aggregate the gradients on the parameter server by majority vote. Um, is that a good thing? Maybe the um, improvement by adding machines saturates with majority vote. Maybe something bad happens. We, we should worry about that. Um, okay, so what results do we show? First of all, we show that you can make the algorithm converge if you set the hyperparameters in the right way. Um, we characterize objective functions where sign SGD and majority vote are as nice as SGD. What we mean by that is for these objective functions, the algorithm gets the same dimension dependence and majority vote gets the same variance reduction as full precision SGD. This is like a free lunch, compression coming at no cost. More, uh, moreover, we suggest that these are the typical functions which you would um, encounter in deep learning. So this is really basically a very relevant algorithm for deep learning because um, compression can come as a free lunch. So first of all, we'll give the single worker theory and then we'll move on to the distributed theory multi-worker theory. Um, our results hold under some assumptions. First of all, we assume that the objective function has a lower bound. Um, we make a, a variance bound assumption where we assume that each component of the stochastic gradient has a bounded variance. This means that our variance bound parameter is a vector where each component uh, is a variance bound for each weight in the network. We also assume a Lipschitz smoothness assumption, which is also coordinate-wise. There's a, a, a parameter, a Lipschitz smoothness parameter associated with every weight in the network. These um, coordinate-wise assumptions are not standard, but they're interesting because they allow you to encode notions of noise sparsity and noise density, um, curvature or smoothness sparsity, smoothness density. Um, which, as we will see, has, uh, controls the theoretical properties of sine SGD. So um, we make some now definitions. N is the number, sorry, K is the number of iterations, and N is the number of back propagations. The reason K and N are different is because we make use of a mini batch size, so N is larger than K. And perhaps one of the limitations of the current work is that we have to assume that the mini batch size is quite large. Uh, and in future work, we actually uh, found a way to um, get around that. Um, but this is sort of a large batch theory. Um, okay, so under these assumptions, you can show that SGD gets the following rate. Um, I'll help you pass this. Um, so on the left-hand side, we have an, some, some kind of average two norm with an expectation over the noise and an average over the K iterations. Um, this is the thing that we want to be small. The reason we're using a first order optimizer is we want to find a place where the gradient is small. So we want to drive down the left-hand side. Um, we get the SGD has the characteristic one over square root n dependence on number of back propagations. So increasing the number of back propagations drives down the bound on the um, expected gradient norm. And if we now look inside the square brackets on the right hand side, there are some constants infinity norm on smoothness and two norm on the noise. Now let's compare this to what uh, we proved for sine SGD. So broadly speaking, the bounds look very similar. 
Um, but there are some key differences which I'm going to point out. First of all, on the left-hand side, we get a one norm on the gradient instead of the two norm. Now, on the right-hand side, we get the same one over square root n dependence on number of back propagations. That's like interesting. The algorithm has the same um, back propagation complexity as SGD. Um, and in square brackets, we have a one norm on the smoothness and a one norm on the noise. Um, so the, the key difference basically is the norms which appear in the sine SGD bound versus the SGD bound. And how these um, norms compare between the algorithms will sort of um, inform you about the relative properties of the algorithms. In particular, in the sine SGD bound, there's no explicit dimension dependence. So what could go wrong with sine SGD? If the uh, smoothness is very dense, and if the noise is very dense, um, we can pick up factors of dimension on the right-hand side, which is like the really bad dimension dependence. Um, this is, so now, now I've converted the norms to be in the same form as uh, in the SGD bound, but made the assumption that these quantities are very dense and shown that there's, uh, sine SGD can have much worse dimension dependence. But what can save the algorithm is that the same is true of the gradient. The gradient one norm can be, uh, if the gradient is dense, can also pick up a factor of dimension. And now you can see that these dimension factors can cancel on the left and right and um, get the same dimension dependence as SGD. So that's great. So the question uh, we should have is, uh, are the gradients dense in deep learning problems? Before we look at that question empirically, um, let's look at the multi-worker theory. With M workers, SGD gets the following bound. Divide the variance by square root M. That's why we use M workers. We want to build a better quality gradient estimate and th therefore squash the noise. Could we hope for the same variance reduction for majority vote, sign SGD? Uh, under one additional assumption, we can. The assumption is that the gradient noise is unimodal symmetric, as an example, a Gaussian. Um, this is a reasonable assumption in practice by the central limit theorem. If you average gradients over a mini-batch, you expect that things become Gaussian. Um, we'll, we'll empirically characterize it in a moment, but under this assumption, so, uh, majority vote gets the same theoretical speed up as SGD uh, using full, so voting is as good as summing. That's, that's, that's like one of the free lunch results. Um, okay, so we should have two questions now. Are the gradients dense? Because then sine SGD will be relevant. And is the noise uh, unimodal symmetric? For example, Gaussian, because then majority vote will be relevant. Let's look at these questions empirically. Um, So gradient density. Um, we define a notion of density phi, which is exactly the one which our theory cares about. One norm divided by two norm. Um, it's normalized by dimension. This is one for a fully dense vector and zero for a fully sparse vector. Uh, we measure this uh, training ResNet 20 on CIFAR 10. Um, so here we have gradient density phi plotted against epoch. Um, and we see that for a range of algorithms averaged over repeats, the, noise, uh, sorry, the gradient is um, within a small constant factor of being fully dense throughout optimization. So this is supporting the idea that um, gradients are pretty dense in deep learning. Okay, great. So this suggests that sine SGD is a relevant optimizer, theoretically. What about noise symmetry, which majority vote cares about? Um, here we measure it on ImageNet. In the paper, there's also the CIFAR results. Um, and you can see that um, for three randomly p uh, chosen um, weights, the, the, the noise distribution of the stochastic gradient basically looks Gaussian, uh, as expected by central limit theorem. This is a mini batch size of 256. So uh, this slide is, trying to, um, is saying that the gradients are dense, um, noise is symmetric. We expect that sign-based optimizers should, uh, should work well. Um, so that's great. Um, okay, does, uh, does the algorithm scale to ImageNet? Would you really want to use this algorithm? Um, well, we argued before that it's very similar to Adam, so you would expect that it would work pretty well because Adam works well. Um, here are some empirical results. So Signum, the momentum version of sine SGD, is the orange curve. Adam is the green curve. And you notice that in all of these plots, um, and in all the plots actually in the paper, uh, 
Signum and Adam have extremely similar performance, which supports the idea that if you want to understand Adam, you should understand the sign-based optimizer, uh, which is much simpler and easier to study. Um, okay, you'll notice that on the, so we, ha we have train accuracy on the left, test accuracy on the right. You'll notice that full precision SGD does, uh, does reach a slightly higher accuracy in the end, um, echoing um, recent work suggesting that Adam reaches slightly worse performance than SGD. Um, the optimist will now say that uh, here's an opportunity. If we can either work out how to regularize Adam and how to regularize Signum to squeeze out the same performance as SGD, then um, that would be great. Or um, perhaps you would want to use Signum for the first um, portion of optimization and then switch to SGD at the end of optimization. To, basically, generalization is kind of poorly understood. and. Um, but the, the, right, the nice thing is that these plots aren't showing you the compression benefits. These are per epoch. Um, so like the proposed way to train neural networks is use um, Signum with majority vote, get the benefits of compression for the majority of training, and then switch to uh, SGD at the end of training. Um, OK, performance, very similar to Adam. May want to switch to SGD towards the end. Uh, what, what about majority vote? Um, does that work? Um, this is work with a, it's not in the paper, but um, we're working on it at the moment, with a really great undergrad called uh, Jawe. And here we compare one worker Signum and one worker SGD against 15 worker Signum and 15 worker SGD training a CIFAR model, uh, ResNet 18. And we see that majority vote is getting the same speed up as full precision SGD. Um, so that's great. We, uh, every, all communication is one bit compressed, but we're, we're not really losing out in terms of convergence. Um, we show you the test accuracy results as well, and you can see that there is some uh, degradation in generalization. Uh, again, generalization is kind of poorly understood, and maybe um, it would be good if we did some, uh, if, we, if we really understood generalization, perhaps we could come up with a better regularizer, or we could switch to SGD at the end of optimization. Um, but, uh, to sum up, here's the optimizer. It's just five lines of code. It's really simple. Um, Sign-based sign optimizer with majority vote. Um, my poster tonight, um, I'm considering screening the World Cup semi-final at my poster. And um, thank you for listening. Uh, we have about three minutes for questions. If people would like to come up to the microphone, please. Uh, hi, thank you for the talk. I have one concern as someone from distributed systems. I care about unbiasedness. I see that you, you, you mentioned the fact that traditional compressed SGD uh, uh, does some additional work to guarantee unbiasedness. But uh, for me, when I want to build uh, a poisoning resilient uh, SGD that I can distribute and be robust to some of the workers being attackers, uh, I care a lot about unbiasedness, and I uh, would really like if you can give a word or two of how could sign SGD guarantee unbiasedness and then be plugged into poisoning resilient uh, distributed SGD. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so yeah, one of the messages really of the of the work is that you you don't need to worry about unbiasedness, and I guess I would separate poison resilience from unbiasedness. Uh, actually, the majority voting algorithm is quite. Uh, intuitively resilient to, um, to one of the workers trying to poison you. Take the example of um, one of the workers sending infinity. Uh, with full precision SGD, that's going to um, wreck everything because all the parameters get sent to infinity. But majority vote quite naturally attributes a certain weighting to each worker. Um, so it has, there's like more properties of majority vote which are nice than I've characterized, but some of them are like robustness to broken workers, probably robustness to adversarial workers. Uh, it's just like has really nice properties. Thank you. Hi. Um, quick question about the symmetry assumption. So a ResNet has like 25 million parameters, um, and there's like 1.3 million data points in ImageNet. Can you really expect? the CLT to kick in for all 25 million parameters in that setting? Well, yeah. Uh, in, uh, it, uh, I mean, you just don't hope, I, I don't think you can really hope for concentration of measure in 28 million dimensions with that many samples, can you? 
yeah, I think the central limit theorem applies to all the all the, all the parameters in the same way. Uh, it, it might not matter, like one of the sort of intuitions I have is that if things go wrong for a few of the parameters, that, that doesn't matter. It's the, what, what learning cares about is having the majority of the parameters behaving nicely. Um, I, I see what you mean. Sorry, I, now I understand the question. But yeah, I, I, I think that it, you want the majority of the parameters to behave nicely and that should be enough. Hello, I'm sorry if I have missed this information. Uh, did you measure the overall physical time uh, performance improvement for overall system. I've seen the speed up for uh, network communication, but uh, can you give me uh, speed up for overall training? Um, yeah, thanks. We actually haven't um, implemented the compressed version yet. So that, uh, th that bar chart showing 32 speed up is like the, the like, I mean, you get that speed up in communication, but it's not clear that that translates into learning. If, um, yeah, we're currently working on a PyTorch implementation of compressed majority vote. Uh, if, if anybody wanted to work on a TensorFlow version, that would be great, and could they get in touch with me? But yeah, we don't, we don't have those results yet. Okay, thank you. Uh, great, let's thank Jeremy again.